Ragnarok, the doom of the gods. Long ago, the gods and the giants were at war. The gods, led by Odin, the All-Father, ruled over the nine realms from their home in Asgard. The giants who lived in Jotunheim were the enemies of the gods and often tried to invade and destroy their lands. Among the giants was Loki, the trickster, who was once a friend of the gods, but turned against them and caused many troubles. One day, Loki killed Baldur, the god of light and joy, who was beloved by all. The gods were furious and captured Loki, and bound him to a rock with a venomous snake dripping its poison on his face. Loki's wife, Sigyn, tried to catch the venom in a bowl, but every time she had to empty the bowl, the venom would hit Loki's face and make him scream in agony. His screams would shake the earth and cause earthquakes. Meanwhile, the world was falling into chaos and decay. Three harsh winters came, one after another, with no summer in between. This was the Fimbul winter, the great winter that foretold the coming of Ragnarok. The sun and the moon were chased by two wolves, Skal and Hati, who finally caught and devoured them. The stars also vanished from the sky, leaving only darkness. The people of Midgard, the realm of humans, became violent and greedy, killing each other for food and wealth. The bonds of kinship and loyalty were broken, and the world was filled with evil. The gods knew that Ragnarok was near and prepared for the final battle. They blew the horn Jalarhorn, which echoed throughout the Nine Realms, calling the gods and their allies to arms. The gods put on their armor and weapons, and mounted their steeds. Odin rode his eight-legged horse, Sleipnir, and carried his spear, Gungnir. Thor, the god of thunder, rode his chariot pulled by two goats, and wielded his hammer, Njolnir. Frey, the god of fertility, rode his boar, Gulenbursti, and fought with a stag's antler, since he had given his sword to his wife, Skadi. Tyre, the god of war, had only one hand, since he had lost the other to the wolf Fenrir. Heimdall, the watchman of the gods, rode his horse, Gultop, and many more gods and goddesses joined the army of Asgard, along with the Einherjur, the fallen warriors who had been chosen by the Valkyries to dwell in Valhalla. The gods crossed the Rainbow Bridge, Bifrost, which connected Asgard and Midgard, and met their enemies on the plain of Vigrid. There, they faced a horde of giants, monsters, and undead. The leader of the enemy army was Loki, who had broken free from his bonds and brought his children with him. These were Fenrir, the monstrous wolf, Jormungen, the giant serpent who encircled the world, and Hel, the goddess of the underworld, who ruled over the realm of the dead. Along with them came the ship Naglfar, made of the nails of the dead, and carrying more giants and demons. And from the north came the fire giants, led by Surt, the lord of Muspelheim, the realm of fire. He carried a flaming sword that could scorch the earth. The battle began, and it was fierce and bloody. The gods and their foes fought with all their might, and many fell on both sides. Odin faced Fenrir, who opened his jaws wide enough to swallow the sky. Odin thrust his spear into the wolf's mouth, but it was not enough to stop him. Fenrir bit off Odin's head and killed him. Then Odin's son, Vidar, avenged his father by ripping apart Fenrir's jaws with his bare hands and killing the wolf. Thor fought Jormungan, who spewed venom all over him. Thor hurled his hammer at the serpent and struck him dead. But the venom took its toll on Thor, and he staggered back nine steps before he collapsed and died. Freyr, the god of fertility, faced Surt, the leader of the fire giants, who wielded a flaming sword. Freyr had given his own sword to his servant Skirnir and fought with a deer antler, but he was no match for Surt, who burned him to ashes. Tyre, the god of war, faced Garm, 
the Hound of Hell, and they killed each other. Loki faced Heimdall, the god of the Watch, who had blown the horn Jalarhorn to warn the gods of the attack. They fought fiercely, but they both wounded each other fatally. Many other gods and heroes fell in the battle, and the world was engulfed in flames. The stars vanished, the earth sank into the sea, and everything was destroyed. But this was not the end. After a long time, a new world emerged from the water, green and fertile. A new sun and a new moon rose in the sky, chased by new wolves. A new generation of gods, led by Odin's sons Balder, who had returned from the dead, and Hod, who had been forgiven for killing him, gathered in the fields of Ida, where Asgard once stood. They found the golden chess pieces that the gods had played with and remembered their past deeds. They also found two humans, Lif and Lifthrasir, who had survived the cataclysm by hiding in the branches of Yggdrasil. They welcomed them and gave them the seeds of life, and they became the ancestors of a new race of people. The gods and the humans lived in harmony, and a new age of peace and prosperity began.